Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac, and yesterday Apple released macOS Tahoe 26.1 RC, or Release Candidate. A Release Candidate is the final version released to developers and public beta testers before it's released to the public. If there's no additional issues, this will be the version that's released to the public, but if there are additional issues, we'll have an RC2 or a different build when it releases. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later though. Now this came in at 14.73 gigabytes, that's on my 16 inch M4 Max MacBook Pro, and anytime you go from a beta to a public release, you're going to have a large install as it's reinstalling almost everything or the entire OS. The same is true when you go back to a beta as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go up to the Apple, click about this Mac, and you can see if we click on Mac OS Tahoe 26.1, the build number is 25B77. This, again, like I mentioned before, will be the final release build if there's no additional issues. If there are, we'll see a different build number, but this is how you can tell. Now let's take a look at what's new. So we'll close this out and you'll see we go down to settings, but as far as what's new, if we go to appearance, you'll see there's a new option to change between liquid glass, leaving it either clear or tinted. So you can change this depending on what you'd like to see and it carries across to different applications. So if we go into the, the control center, you won't see much of a difference, but they've changed it throughout the OS. Maybe if we go into music, for example, you can see that it changes the bar down here at the bottom. We'll give it a second to load. So so right now, you can see what it looks like. Let me bring this below. We'll click on appearance and change it to tinted. So currently it looks about the same, but it's going to stay tinted or frosted the entire time. If I click back over to clear, it should change as I scroll and look a little bit clearer instead of just frosted glass. So there are changes throughout, just like there are on iOS. If we close out of this, and go into our apps here, you'll see that we have more apps from left to right. So now we have up to seven, as you can see here, and you can see more apps at once, and it's just a small change they've made. So you can still go back into Spotlight Search, but then it expands, expands out when you click on the applications. Also within applications, if we scroll down, you'll see that we have a new TV icon. This has been updated just like it has on iOS 26.1, and it's just a slight change as it's no longer TV Plus. However, they haven't updated it here on the left. It's still Apple TV Plus, so I would imagine this will change fairly soon as it's now just called Apple TV. But that's one of the small changes here. The next update has to do with languages. If we go into system settings under Apple Intelligence and Siri, Apple has added additional languages for Apple Intelligence now. So you'll see we have Arabic, we have Chinese in multiple locations or styles, we have Danish, Dutch, English, as well as Finnish, French, German, Hebrew, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Norwegian, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, Swedish, Thai, Turkish, and Vietnamese. So those have been added. So that will work in your native language and should be available once this releases. Now on your iPhone, this also carries across to the Translate app and also to the live translation within Messages. So you'll have those options there. And in Messages, if we select Automatically Translate, we have similar options here. So Vietnamese, Turkish, and not as many, but we do have additional options. If we go into the Phone app, there's a slight change. So if we go down to Phone here, Within phone, if we click the little dialer pad here at the top, they've now changed the icons or the number pad to white or more of a translucent look compared to what it was before where it was gray. So it's a slight change, but again, this matches what we have on iOS as well. Now, if we go back into our settings and maybe you're using screen time. So maybe you have a child, we have a family account here. And if you have a child utilizing screen time, they've now turned something on by default. So with my son selected under screen time, you'll see communication safety. Communication safety is now turned on by default for existing child accounts for ages 13 to 17. The age actually varies by country or region, but if it's someone that's considered a minor and not an adult, it will turn on automatically. You can turn this off if you'd like, but it's now turned on by default. They've also improved FaceTime in this update. According to Apple, they've improved audio quality in low bandwidth conditions. So that's a small update, but something they've brought to it. There's also an update when it comes to music with auto mix. So auto mix has been here before, but if we go into our music at the top, go to settings under playback, we have auto mix. They've now improved this so it works over AirPlay. So if you wanna use this over AirPlay, you can now do that. Within Safari, if we go to Apple's public facing release notes, you'll see they've resolved quite a few issues. So they fixed an issue in Apple TV app on macOS where the search bar was missing. 
They've also resolved issues with background assets, game controllers, sudo, as well as Swift UI. So there's not anything remaining here as far as a known issue. And so that's great news. Typically they leave a few things here, but there's nothing here to note, at least for this update. Also, we expect some security updates within Apple's security website. Again, we expect some updates here. However, they don't release these until after it's released to the public. So we'll expect this to be updated and we'll talk more about that when it releases to the public as well. Now, when it comes to overall performance so far, it's pretty good. Now I've been using the public version on my main editing machines, and this is actually one of them. This is my travel editing machine and it works really great, but so far it seems super smooth. So just going through different applications, going through maybe Final Cut. Everything seems to be nice and fast on here. However, it will take a few days to note. And if you want me to do a follow-up on macOS, let me know in the comments below. When it comes to battery life, if we take a look at battery, this particular device I don't leave plugged in all the time necessarily, but over the last 10 days, you'll see that it's used a little bit. It just depends. While I'm using it, it is often plugged in, but sometimes on standby it's not. But overall, it seems to be getting me easily what battery life I would expect just using it. I typically tether it to an Apple vision pro and use that as a monitor and generally it lasts without an issue. When it comes to battery health, it's still at 100%. I just leave it on optimized battery charging. In fact, I don't, I don't even try to manage the battery whatsoever. If it needs to be charged, I plug it in. If it doesn't, I plug it in. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes I just plug it in to leave it plugged in. So it seems to be holding up well. And I've had this since launch day. If you're wondering if you should install Mac OS Tahoe 26.1 RC, well, if you're on 26.0.1 and you're having issues, I wouldn't necessarily update to try and resolve those. However, it seems to be much better than it was before. So a lot of the stutters and slowness people were experiencing seems to be gone and the overall speed is just improved. So you definitely could install it since it's fairly easy to go back. Just make sure you have a backup to make sure you have all of your files, photos, and everything else. If you're updating through iCloud or backing up there, you shouldn't really have an issue though. Now, as far as the public release, let's go ahead and take a look at the calendar. So we expect the public release probably on Monday the 3rd. We don't know this 100% as Apple hasn't said, but based on what they've done in the past, they typically release them on a Monday. If there's additional issues, we could see an RC2 by the end of the week, or they could de delay it or postpone it, but either way, that's what I would expect iOS 26.1, iPadOS 26.1, macOS 26.1, I would expect them all to release on the 3rd or early next week. So that's pretty much everything so far with macOS 26.1 RC. Of course, if you found anything else that I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link the iPhone version in the description below with a link to the creator. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.